So we come to the conclusion that there must be this supremely rational being that is the source and maintainer of our power to reason and grasp the world around us. And that crucial concept of us grasping the cosmos and nature is going to lead to the conclusion, as we're going to see in this segment, that God, we're going to call this self-existing eternal reason God for short, must be not only the source of reason, but the source of nature herself. But let's start with our logical option. What is the relationship between God and nature once we've proven that there has to be this God? Well, either they're entirely independent of each other, both self-existing, both self-contained and on their own, and there's no relation whatsoever, or they influence each other, right? Well, the influence could be that nature is dependent on God, right? Or that God is dependent on nature. And so these are our logical options. Either they're totally separate existences or one comes from the other, right? But we're going to see that another fact that we observe about nature proves they can't be separate. And therefore, one must come from the other. And that is, nature is actually ruled by reason. And you might ask yourself, how do we know this? Well, look around you. There's technology all over the place. You are actually manipulating nature in ways that nature would never have done on her own. That's technology. So therefore, reason can change nature make her more natural or less natural, but nature can never change reason without destroying her. In other words, yes, nature can influence reason, but only by destroying reason. Whereas reason comes to nature as a ruler to a servant. Nature receives reason as a, as a subject does her king. And so therefore you see that there's this asymmetrical relationship between reason and nature. Is in our, just in our interactions with nature, our rational interest, we don't come to nature as invaders to a foreign country that is resisting us. No, reason manipulates nature and domesticates her and makes nature in his own image. Now you have to ask a question here. How is that possible? How is science possible? Because without science, there is no technology. Without knowledge of nature, there is no technology which is able to manipulate nature. Well, science is knowledge or understanding of nature's nature, right? Well, what does that mean? That means we start to understand the laws that rule nature, that govern nature as a system. In other words, nature is a rational system. It's governed by rational laws, isn't it? Now you say, well, how do we know these laws are rational? Well, that we can know the laws through reason means that the laws are understandable, are reasonable laws that reason can understand and therefore predict and manipulate. Therefore, these laws are rational laws. But it's the laws of nature that make nature the nature that it is. In other words, different laws and you have a different cosmos, don't you? So therefore, it is the laws of nature, these rational laws, that give nature its existence. Therefore, nature is ruled by reason in two ways. One, it can be manipulated by reason, but reason can't manipulate it. And two, it actually gets its existence from rational laws that determine its behavior as a system. So, reason is the cause of the continued character and existence of nature itself. But, God is the source of reason, and reason is the source of nature. And so therefore it follows they're not separate in their existence. Nature wouldn't exist without reason, without the rationality that reason lends it. And 
nature cannot be the cause of reason, since we saw that any time something comes out of the non-rational, it is not rational. And so therefore, we see God and nature are not separate at all. And God is not dependent on nature, because God is self-existent, and God is reason, and nature cannot produce reason. So that leaves us with this choice that is grounded in our very experience of the universe as a rational system, that nature herself is dependent and ruled by God. And so it follows that since God is reason itself, and reason is what gives nature its existence, that God is the creator of nature by being the creator of her rationality. But then that gives God another characteristic. When we say something has powers, the power to do this or that, but not the power to do this other thing. For example, fire has the power to harden clay. It doesn't have the power to melt clay. It has the power to burn paper, not to harden it. What are we doing? We're saying that these are the laws of nature, and that these laws determine what it is for things to have power. If God is the source of the laws of nature, then, then it follows that God is the source of all power. And so therefore it follows that not only is God supremely rational, the source of all reason, and therefore the source of all knowledge, but that God must also be the source of all power itself. So, it's rightful to call this eternal reason, this logos, the source of nature. And it is also rightful to call this being all-powerful, and therefore to call this being God. God, the most rational stance we can hold as to the origin of the universe, once we have this supernatural Thing that inhabits the universe called reason, Lewis argues, the only conclusion that's rational that we can draw is that there is a God, and that God is both the creator of reason and nature. And so what do we have here? We have a world full of miracles, don't we? Because what is a miracle but an interference into nature, a manipulation of nature in a way that nature could and would never do on her own. Once we have these holes in nature, they become windows outside of nature into supernature. And we find that that window leads us as a sign, a rational proof to the existence of a supremely supernatural being, God, God's self.